Dear learners, I am Christina Georgi, your academic counsellor for the course code BEGC105, which is titled American Literature. Now, let's have an introduction to American Drama. In this particular session, we'll discuss the growth of American Drama right from its beginning, from 1700s till the 19th 40s that is till the era when the modern american drama emerged so we can say that american drama began in the american colonies so when did this drama begin for the first time it was during the 17th century american drama of the later period that is the drama of the 18th and 19th centuries mostly had British influence on it. In fact, until 1910, the New York City Theatre, that is the American Theatre, presented more British plays than American plays. So why do you think this happened? Only because the common language and the ready availability of British plays made them do so. Moreover, the British actors were also present. So these could be the reasons for their domination. Gradually, American drama began to diverge from British drama and this happened around 1830s. Nevertheless, most of these American drama continued to copy the British model. We can say that this continuity went on to the early 20th century. It could be because of this reason that critics claim that the American drama was born only at the end of World War I. What happened during that time? Eugene O'Neill and his dramas appeared. This happened during the 1920s. So by the end of the 19th century, American drama had moved towards realism. Realism dominated both comedies and tragedies even in the 20th century. So what do you mean by realism? Realist plays, they portrayed the reality of the life around them through these realist plays. Remember that. And after the 20th century or as the time progressed, the American drama took up broader issues of race, gender, sexuality, death, etc. So that would serve as a general introduction. Now let's discuss the beginnings of American drama. That is around 1600s and 1700s. So we now understand that before the 18th century, there wasn't much theater activity as such. Why was that so? That's simply because the early settlers of American colonies had a tough living conditions. Their belief in hard work also disallowed them from indulging in theater activities. So the first theatrical performance in America that led to the trial of actors happened in the year 1665 and the play is titled A Bear and A Cub. In the 18th century, many colonies in America enacted laws forbidding the performance of plays. We can say that to some extent the plays were actually banned. Why was that so? That is because of the Puritan beliefs. Remember Puritanism that you studied as part of English history? Yes, the Puritan belief that the seventh of the ten commandments in the Bible did not allow dancing and enacting plays. Yes, most probably plays will have these dancing and enacting, right? So they believed that this was not allowed by the ten commandments of the Bible. But how did these plays become successful or how did the popularity of such plays arise? That is because of the colleges. In the 17th century, colleges in several colonies allowed theatrical activity, even if it happened after much hesitation. 
because they thought such activities could benefit the students to utilize their speech skills in their careers such as business and law so do you know the very first play that actually happened because this play androboros in the year 1774 was written by robert hund he was an english governor so this particular play established the tradition of political satire charting out the course that american drama was to follow for the next two centuries let's now have a quick mention regarding the popular plays of this period this includes the paxton boys 1732 the trial of atticus 1771 and the candidates of the humors of a virginia election written in 1770 now let's have a quick mention regarding the american company that is a group of british professional actors formed the touring circuit in the 1790s and this group in the early 1760s was known as the american company so in the year 1767 they staged a play titled the prince of parthia it was actually a tragedy and it was written by thomas godfrey the first professional production of a play written in america was the prince of parthia during the period of american revolution satirical plays were written so these plays were written either supporting british control of the colonies or attacking this So some of the examples include Battle of Brooklyn the defeat written in 1773 the group written in 1776 the black heads written in 1776 the patriots written in 1779 etc Robert Taylor he was the first playwright of the nation to write the finest american play of the 18th century so some of his plays include the contrast written in 1787 it was a five act comedy and it satirized the customs of the upper class it is written in the format of british comedy so there still existed this influence of the british plays So if we move on to the drama American drama of the 1800s there we find a notable figure William Dunlop so he was the person who introduced melodrama melodrama became the most eminent dramatic form of the 19th century so the credit for giving drama its most important characteristic dramatic conflict etc goes to him remember most of william dunlop's plays were adaptations or translations from the french and german majority of the plays were written in america in the 19th century and were largely produced for commercial purposes remember most of these plays during this time of the era were not published but were meant only to be seen and not to be read so as a result of that if today we search for these items for these write ups more or less it won't be available it is kind of lost one of dunlop's contemporaries who was a contemporary of dunlop james nelson baker so he is also the producer of some of the best known works such as marmion written in 1812 superstition written in 1824 etc so see the superstition is a romantic tragedy another notable work is the indian princess written in the year 18 oh, 1808 so it is the first play to explore native american themes and characters One major change that happened in the early 19th century is the shift towards romanticism. 
there happened a shift in focus from a nationalistic cause to the aesthetic values of romanticism one notable figure is edwin forrest he was an immensely popular actor he also encouraged the writing of american romantic plays best american play of the time was franesca da rimini it this was actually a romantic verse it was staged by george henry bocker so the other examples include brutus the fall of taraquin written in 1819 by john howard the gladiator written in 1831 by robert bird among others so in the year 1828 edwin forrest began to offer annual awards for new plays with american themes so the first to receive this award was metamora remember the racial social and economic tensions in america that brought about the civil war was well represented in the works especially in the work of harriet beecher stone's novel uncle tom's cabin that is one of the most remarkable works of the era so if we look at the american drama in the 19th century in the 19th century the most predominant dramatic genre was the melodrama melodrama addresses issues of family social position and wealth and also a preoccupation of every individual one advantage of these plays was that it was easy for these plays to be adaptable to any type of audience actors were allowed to use their talents freely taking advantage of a wide range of materials so the most popular plays of this genre that is melodrama includes dali's under the gaslight written in 1857 bocal's drama written in 1857 that is the poor of the new york belasco's the girl of the golden west and also the heart of maryland both were written in the year 1857 so all these plays mentioned here are written in the year 1857 so the popularity of melodramatic form that had begun in the 18th century still continued in the 19th century now comes the impact of realism in american drama so after the civil war american dramas were deeply oriented towards realism concerned with a faithful representation of the life of the playwright the middle class life and its preoccupations were shown in these dramas the scenes had three dimensional settings and the actors spoke authentic sounding dialogue and most of these playwrights were influenced by henrik ibsen he was a norwegian playwright remember even our drama to all my sons has some influence of ibsen in it the late 19th century works such as such as steel mackay's hazel kirke william dean howells mouse trap that is one important work mouse trap so these are all notable realistic plays realism reached new levels in the last decades of the 19th century and also the first decades of the 20th century so most of the works of this time were concerned with social issues benson howards a text of steel written in the year 1896 the banker's doctor written in the year 1873 henrietta written in the year 1887 a trip to china town written in the year 1891 edward harrington's dance revelations written in the year 1884 and many other examples so among the late 19th century dramatists david belasco steel mackay and william gillett were closely associated with the theater business social tensions in america began to be explored by the playwrights leading up to the first world war william vaughn 
and his work The Great Divide written in 1906 Rachel Crowther's A Man's World written in 1909 Langdon Mitchell's The New Work Idea written in 1906 all these works addressed social issues meaningfully while managing to entertain the audience simultaneously so the american family its development and this integration that dominated the plays of this period also become a recurring theme of playwrights of the 20th century so in the early part of the 20th century there emerged an amateur group they are known as province stout 11 players for promoting american drama and producing new plays exclusively by american playwrights so they set a new course for american theater in the modern period susan glass pills one act play trifles written in 1916 was one of its first productions as i mentioned one of the phenomenal figures of this era is eugene o'neill so his play the hairy ape written in 1922 was the first to introduce expressionism in american drama expressionism was a movement in the visual literary and performing arts that expressed subjective feelings and emotions rather than depicting reality objectively so this was more a subjective kind of writing remember it developed in germany during the early 20th century so the prominent playwrights include john reed max eastman etna etc in the 1920s the most implo- the most important plays were professionally produced in the new york city stage the plays of the 1920s and early 30s were very much exciting they believe some remarkably fine plays were produced such as eugene o'neill's strange interlude written in 1928 morning becomes electra in 1931 etc remember the economic collapse of the great depression when did this happen it happened in the year 1930 so this led to the permanent closure of many american theaters in a way this paved the way for the motion pictures the new sound technology in america gave voice to the motion pictures and in the middle 40s the most strikingly new writings for theater emerged in the works of arthur miller and tennessee williams they are famous so they contributed some form of plays known as psychological plays these were plays written by tennessee williams and arthur miller examples include a street car named desire written in the year 1947 cat on a hot tin roof in the year 1955 and the glass menagerie written in the year 1944 so all these are written by tennessee williams remember these are important plays now comes other will other miller's modern tragedies such as death of a salesman written in the year 1949 it combines realistic characters and social issues similarly all my sons will have a detailed study of all my sons You must have heard about Edward Albee, right? He used to write absurd dramas such as Sue's Story in the year 1959, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf in the year 1962, etc. So he was one of the major dramatists of the year 1960s, okay? So if we move on to 1990s, we saw the return of two notable playwrights. Who are they? Arthur Miller and Edward Albee. Yeah, sorry about that. Hmm. So it was during the 1990s that Arthur Miller wrote The Broken Glass and Edward Albee wrote 
told women also so these works received widespread acclaim remember edward alby won the pulitzer prize for this whereas miller's play finishing the picture was produced in the year 2004 as well yes one thing to remember is that realism we are studying about american realism remember realism continued to be the primary form of dramatic expression in the 20th century as we studied in the mid 1990s and in the beginning of the 21st century blockbuster musicals eliminated new commercial theaters in the united states there came a transition and this targeted the younger audience who were attracted more by films television and computer environment all right so there happened a paradigm shift by which the younger audience were attracted to other forms of entertainment namely films television etc and hence the importance of drama gradually reduced another event that happened is that many playwrights started writing plays with film and television adaptation they had these adaptations in mind so that they could reach the global audience they had such adaptations in mind to reach geographically diverse audience making the american theater specialized in its alternative so it is in this background that we need to study arthur miller and all his works so we'll deal with arthur miller and his works in the next session